picked up, brought into the ship, mutilated, and left back down in the field. No tracks, nothing, you know. Uh, they do the same thing with people. And depending, all you have to know is what wavelengths are absorbed in the particular thing you're after. And as long as you can pick a wavelength or a frequency of light that's absorbed within a quarter of that wavelength, you've got a thing you can pick them up with. Uh, that's that interference pattern, but we don't need to talk about that. Well, maybe we do. It won't let me go. Okay. Uh, uh, tractor beam engine. Well, once you understand about a tractor beam, one of the things you'll notice is tractor beams can be used to form a non-action reaction engine. Most of our propulsion systems are like airplanes where you grab some air and you blow it out that way, uh, and the, the change of momentum takes you forward. Or we do the same thing with a jet engine or a rocket engine. In other words, you throw some matter out behind you so you can go forward. That's a very wasteful way of doing things, and it's inconvenient, and sometimes uh, if you're out of the atmosphere, it gets really doesn't work well. But if you take that plate up there, that thing, I'm, my tractor beam, I'm having it do raster lines and then repeat on that plate up there. Well, if that plate is bolted to the wall of your ship, you can raster on it and put a force on it, but of course, if you're putting a force on it, you're putting a force on the ship. So it's an engine. It's really neat to hover with, you know? Not make noise and blow all kinds of, you know, just, I'm just hovering. And then if I really want to get up goal, I have a bigger version of this, or there's other ways to do this that are electromagnetic but are not tractor beam methods. But we don't, have, we don't want to talk about that today. Uh, what you need uh, to break the light barrier? A really big power plant, <laughs> a non-action reaction engine, as you just saw, basically a tractor beam on your wall of your ship, uh, accelerated time flow rate around the ship. Um, if you want to go to the next star system, you've got to figure, way to figure out a way to break the special relativity law, which says that all observers, you know, uh, uh, have to observe uh, person sublight. Uh, well, you can do it. Because here's that type of diagram again. Now, just imagine that now and we're not talking about moving through uh, the atmosphere, we're now talking through about moving through space itself. And I got these two vectors again. I got this guy just kind of sitting out there minding his own business watching this guy go by. From his reference point, he's do I'm doing velocity VG if I'm in the ship. And the ship's doing another velocity V sub S according to its way of thinking. Why? Because it's got accelerated time flow and it's that taking that technology and spread it around outside the ship. And it's got a non-action reaction engine inside. And it's also got this big power plant that feeds it and runs the, the uh, accelerated time flow system. So it can go flying at a really high speed compared to the space it's overcoming. But because it's got a real high time flow rate in front of it, as that space enters the ship, closes on it, it's always sub-light. And as long as you... Uh, meets that requirement that, that space is closing on the hull below the speed of light. He hasn't broken the special relativity conditions that say you can't go faster than the speed of light. Uh, the universe and beyond. All we need in order to join them is big power sources, non-action reaction engines, accelerated time flow technologies, greatly advanced materials technologies, and mental health. May the force be with us. And so at this point, we're done. That was fast, huh?